Yeah, we'll blow the Bozella next time. Oh, I think we had plenty of those a couple of years ago. <laughs> no, no, no way. We didn't have enough. Hello, everyone. Uh, some time ago, I uh, wrote a page on Wikimedia Commons about a project called Wikimaps. Uh, it's more like this would be nice to do a project to get more uh, historical maps into uh, uh, Commons, Wikipedia in a way to uh, actually make them more accessible. I completely forgot about the page, didn't pay any attention in anymore. And a couple of months ago, we were all in, in London for a conference, and uh, Susanna approached me like, oh, yeah, you wrote this page about Wikimaps? It was really cool. Uh, I wrote a whole presentation about it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was restarted again. Um, I submitted this presentation to Wikimedia because uh, Susanna wasn't sure if uh, she was uh, able to come, you know, funding and other things. And, uh, but she is here. This is uh, Susanna from uh, Wikimedia Finland. And uh, together we're doing a presentation about Wikimaps. I was also going to present to Martin. <laughs> Martin, because of, um, what we are going to talk about have a very strong link together. Um, the tool that Martin is going to talk about has a very strong role in the MAPS project. So I'm in a way, even though you, we will present consecutively, like me first and you then, we could, uh, for example, take questions together, because they could con address either all of the areas. What is or then, you know, well, how, however. <laughs> so um, I'm hoping to interact with you and probably hopefully some people over the net through web. So here's an, um, an etherpad address. So if any one of you would kind of uh, be kind enough to log into it, uh, then we could uh, we could you could probably like uh, propose questions or <coughs> some good ideas about the project itself. How to propose it. Yeah. So, Oh, you have to help me. Yes. <laughs> can, you go, can you go back to the address? Okay. address? Okay. It's a really difficult address. <laughs> so, yeah. give me a sign when you're more or less interested. Oh, can someone put it on Twitter? Yes. So yeah. Okay. You ready to do this, Twitter, sir? Twitter. Tell no, someone else. Give me a Martin's words. Like there, there are loads of maps in in, in the Wikimedia Commons, not to mention how many there are in the world. And and uh, well, in Wikimedia Commons, the way they are handled looks like not like this, but like this. So then not not really so very useful as maps. You can't use them as maps. You can't say navigate to them or go on an exploration. Even worse, that sometimes in archives they look like this. <laughs> so um, uh, the plan about Wikimaps is first and primarily how to make use of uh, maps in the commons. Here are some requirements in order to make them work as maps. Give me a sign when you get the impression of how long you want to read them. I might want to read them aloud, it's a kind of novel world. Did we miss something here? <laughs> yeah. That's really, uh, basically making them more accessible is part of our mission. <laughs> We're going to talk more about that. Yeah. This is actually going to be the very center of Well, this is a just, I, I have to kind of jump ahead a little. I did a series of events now. I, I was in Tartu last weekend uh, running a, a workshop in State of the Map Politics. Uh, and 
here is where we started the uh, Wikimap start to Hong Kong project. So, so there were people from the OpenStreetMap locally, regionally from the, the Baltics, and I asked them uh, use cases and such. So most of these are from there. So just to have some run through of uh, ideas for the usage of historical maps. Well, this is not exhaustive, there are many more, but, and it would be very nice if you could be kind enough to jot down your ideas about like, what to do with maps. But in, in any case, these are some, some random ideas that we can just you know, visualize with a few images. Like this is a map that could be created out of different uh, elements. There could be mobile stuff. And then there is information that comes out of the maps that should be related to, well, could be also related within the context of Wikimedia, especially to, well, let's say, the monitor of the world. Yeah, so here's my scheme for, for what we are achieving, trying to achieve. We are talking about glamour, and I guess I don't know. Here's the glam who has those regions. Well, let's say usually, like, the National Archives in Helsinki has two million maps uh, that are digitized and open. So, in fact, they could already be used. And then there's the Wikimedia Commons. And then we come to the part that Mark then is going to talk uh, extensively about the glam tool. It's an, um, partly an upload tool for bringing a lot masses of uh, media from the GLAM to Wikimedia Commons. And this is what we are planning to use now in the business project. So here's, well, in London, that was a black box, now it's not so black anymore. Um, the Wikimaps, this is the area we are going to talk about. Here we come to the georeferencing. The idea is that there is the picture, which is a scan of a map, and then there is the map. We need to place them in and find the places that correspond to the actual coordinates in order to have it work like a map. And then we save it again, and we can save that save that file in the comments as well. R, or we can, well, it can be a different manner, but anyway. Digitizing is a geography, those geo people's term for uh, tracing and finding information on the maps. Going, putting that such information in vector or lines, dots into computers. So we can do that too, and we have cooperation going with an um, open street, uh, let's say, sub community called the Open Historic, uh, sorry, Open Historical Map. And uh, I'll tell you more about that later. So, so we could um, bring these geo-referenced maps into an environment in OpenStreetMap where they can be traced just like OpenStreetMap does their, um, I don't know whether they call it actualizing, digitizing, I don't know, right? Yes. So and, uh, they could even be then either stored over there or in Wikidata, which means that then we have <coughs> the connection to all the data that we already have. And then other ways, then, then, then this, uh, this, uh, let's say, an intel intelligent map can then be either embedded in Wikipedia or click, <laughs> exported as file. And then the, the best part of it, well, which is actually something that has not been really like uh, figured out how to do it yet, would be then that the ground will get all this information back. Imagine it goes through this huge. Um, machine of that enrichment and goes back. Yeah. Well, actually sounds more complicated than mine. Like most of these components already exist but they're not they're just connected to the Yeah. We are not actually inventing anything. We're just putting up parts that exist. It's like playing with Lego, you just yeah. have to connect the right pieces. Okay, so here's Here's a, well, I've, I've done six steps. I'll tell you, which is 
too late, uh, late last night to put the numbers here. So this is number one, and then the second one is two, and so on. So there are uh, six areas, consecutive areas that I've identified. Well, the mass upload. There have been people working, uh, working on various areas of this. Um, first, we have worked with the templates for maps, which is like defining the kind of uh, metadata that is required for maps. So this is something that it doesn't exist actually at the moment. So uh, the, uh, the person <laughs> who has been involved in this process is present. Yeah, I just did most of the work. I don't think he's on Wikimania this year. No. So um, then we are working together with a tool that Martin is going to present, the Glam Wiki toolset. Toolset that is a cooperation project between Europeana and uh, three or four Central European Wikimedia chapters. And, and then we are developing <coughs> uh, to, together with uh, our Nordic um, uh, chapter, name <coughs> chapters. Um, uh, Wikimi, Wikimaps Nordic, uh, that we have, we have already contacted some 25 or discussed with some 25 plans from around the Nordic countries for uh, maps cooperation. Um, so working together, finding ways for what to do together with maps and so on, experimenting. Well, now we come to the to the flow to, to the project process process of the, this thing. So here we start from the comments. We assume we have already uploaded them. We are jumping to this, and here is a here is a draft for uh, for um, templates. Actually, this uses information templates, so so it's all encoded there. But it, the, there is no map te template in action yet. It's not going to be known when it's going to be. Then there is going to be a new kind of. Uh, button or a link here with, which says uh, please help to rectify the map. Everything about this is, it, it, it may change because we are continuously in the process of getting this. So this link will bring you to, well, no, to, to the process of adding geolocation to maps and comments. So, um, we have been working on the Wikimaps Walker, which is, um, there are many words for the same darling child, rectifying, georeferencing, warping, they all mean the same here in this case. Uh, it means that how to put the map in, how to stretch and uh, turn and twist it so that it coordinates uh, <coughs> So in this case, it's called the Walker. It's a, um, um, a software de uh, developed uh, originally by the New York Public Library, by Tim Waters. And Tim Waters has been now uh, uh, working on the Wikimaps Walker. So we have an installation, an instance of that Wikimaps Walker on the labs. So it's, uh, it's in action. You can try it out. So um, you probably see <laughs> my slides correctly. This is, a, this is a screenshot of it. So here you see the this process, you click on both of the maps and you make these um, hairs and then when you're done, you click somewhere well, it's called. It's down. like putting <laughs> two balloons over each other. You connect points, like you see a, a church here on this side. You have the same church there, you click it on that side so you know that's exactly the same point. If you do it with multiple points, it will stretch and bend the map. So if you have fairly recent maps, there won't be a lot of stretching. Say you have a 17th century map, you'll see all, all things moving around. And, uh, and when you go to older maps, in fact, the whole process doesn't work. You need to kind of just decide what you want out of it. Or if you have a different kind of projection, you also get weird things. But for these kind of maps, I think this is probably 18th century or something. It will really work very well. Oh, here's some, some data, you can just click the next one. And the more points, of course, the, more, the better the rectifying uh, will work. Yeah, and here's the preview, preview map tab of the previous image. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's it. Yeah. So it will overlap on the existing map. Yeah. And of course, <laughs> this is just one map, but you can do it with hundreds of maps. So, uh, for example, the New York Public Library, when I first saw it a couple of years ago, they did the whole Brooklyn of New York. They took an old book with maps and they scanned them all, and then they did all the map warping, and they glued them together. So, you have the first time they had actually one big map, because we're all all species. So, uh, lots of possibilities where maybe you want to take multiple maps from multiple areas, <coughs> and just overlay them with each other. Be creative. So I was, uh, depending on how much time we have in the end, I can show you the links and, uh, so and you can try it out. How many, how many points at least they use their masks? Three. Three. Yeah. Three is not is enough. I'm uh, sure. to start with. But we are just plus three. Yeah. Well, but actually, because it's, uh, you know the size of the bitmap and the dimensions, two is already enough. No. Three is no, 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 three three not enough. <laughs> because if there, there is a problem of uh, uh, the type of
Okay, and then this is more of on the exploration part, what to do with the geodata if we put it in Wikidata. We start building a gazetteer. A gazetteer is a list of places. How they relate? What's their time span? Where did they exist? What are they in different languages? Um, what are they related? Which rule? For example, <coughs> so in the Tartu case, it's, it's been called Yugir and Tartu and Gopak. And well, in different times, in different rules, but also it's called differently in different uh, well, languages. And then also, which uh, county did it belong to? Which um, rulers were ruling and so on? So all these things. And uh, then again, when we have all this data, we are also we have a huge uh, repository of uh, information that we can use for building maps. Just, just sampling. We can sample from Wikimedia. We can sample from other external sources. We can have tools in Wikimedia, or well, I presume it would be nice to have tools in Wikimedia rather than using <laughs> external sources. But anyway. There's a flow there for, for creating maps for Wikimedia. Yeah. So the whole idea is if you make all the data, all the content freely available, like we normally do, then people who are creative and able can just uh, make new things without having to go to us to get something done. So mm -hmm. if the data is available, make something really cool of that. So, so this is the project I now uh, told you about. This is a this week is, has been a little bit of a um, um, <laughs> project. <laughs> so I started in Tartu on Sunday. So on Sunday, uh, there was the Wikimaps workshop uh, of the state of the map politics, and that was August 4th. And that was with the Wikimap, uh, sorry, OpenStreetMap people from all other Baltic countries. And uh, you tell me to the so you don't press again, it's an auto thing. I did some uh, a workshop asking questions. Here is a, just a slideshow of different things. I had these maps, I had I worked with them with, with the three different lamps, getting a three copies for them to cut. It was a short time, only two groups cut the, the, this cut and paste stuff, others were Ideas. We collected these also in Vietnam, and I have uh, some more documentation to gather in, the, in our project. Yeah, and we did a roundtable on Wednesday here, and that was a um, with projects from within Wikimedia. What do we have in common? What do we need? And so the, yes, if you want, if you're interested, they've been collected on that. Some page of the Wikimedia project, and here's just a brief uh, run through of the ideas. Very much information, I know. <laughs> so, uh, uh, then again, this is something that I don't know exactly what happens, but this is now. This is tonight. Actually, starting whenever the, the, the Americans start waking. There are events taking place in different parts. Are you talking about like 
scan maps? Yes. Like, are you, uh, is, do you think the problem would be like how to get access to them, like in the archives? No, I mean how how to have people to donate more, or to you know, or having having a set for us to you know to scan those maps and then them it out. Yes. Well, uh, let's say in, in Finland and in Europe, somehow there's such a great incentive to do that already. And they are very, very interested to give us everything that they can because it's a question of of crowdsourcing the the, the tedious work of uh, the georeferencing. So they are very interested. So it's like the library is really willing to help. Yes. Like, yes. Well, I know in in the Netherlands already of several archives who have big map collections and would be willing to contribute yeah. because their maps are in the cabinets and they decide and they know they're in a digital cabinet and nobody's looking at them. Because in Hong Kong the case is we don't we don't have much um, resources and people putting those old maps and old um how do you say that the outdated knowledge to put yeah. in to be open accessible. So yeah. it's kinda something new that I've heard about it. Oh yes. Yeah. I think um, it's a very good job. the idea one I the idea is, is to Create a Wikimedia community that works in this. Some sort of structured metadata describing how to map that map in OpenStreetMap, and those two would be combined to apply like what's happening right now with the map form. And there's a very very crossover file format called GeoTIFF, for example. This export part is about that. So so it can be opened in any um, any uh, geo uh, GIS program. into what would be the best or whether we should do many. Like one, one of them is, for example, in the walker you can place many of them and uh, just have them side by side. And then you could somehow stitch it together first and then put it together. Yeah, but then, then I, there's also, it's a, it's, it's a pro problem if you make mistakes. And so you should do this once, but well. Yeah. <laughs> so and then you save a lot of people works. Yeah. Like yeah, but so, so it's something to, uh, to research. I don't know exactly what would be the best. Anybody? Sorry, I was late, so my apologies if you already covered this. But uh, I noticed the, slot, the first slide I saw was you mentioned there in store uh, polygon data and uh, wiki data. Yeah. Uh, so, did you think at all about the problem of keeping that the same code from the street map? 
Yes, I think it should be. Uh, the thing is that dealing from open, well, think, considering the OpenStreetMap um, goals, they probably don't want to like to have the, the uh, some um, thematic data like uh, the spread of uh, some animal species in their database, and also. Um, Wiki data is not interested in your old uh, school house uh, shed. <laughs> so in two small uh, objects of, of no general interest. So we are still probably not covering everything. But I think the same thing is desirable. Yeah. Have you, have you any uh, links with people who are doing uh, this of uh, Yeah, that team right. yeah. <laughs> One more question. Yeah. This one, um, when, when I scan a, a large map, I wind up with a very big yeah. file. Yeah. Um, there's some limits to sort of how big a file I can upload to the columns, yeah. although I truly don't yeah. know what it is. 100 points. Yeah, oh, I've yeah. bumped my head on that many times. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So there was a limit on the rendering of some files when we just changed that. Because those kind of limits are usually going back like five or six years. And that's a long time ago. The, the, everyone's computers increased a lot by that time. Well, I think actually one of the, I don't know which one you mean, but one of them was technological limitations. They basically found a better uh, image converter to use that to mm -hmm. But those, those are technical yeah, also we are talking about what we are talking about billions of uh, maps which are all <sighs> hundreds of megabytes. Yes. So we are talking about a lot of data. So you need a lot of disk space. Yes. So we will have to have discussions. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So <coughs> if you want to ask something from both of us, I'll, I'll be here. Uh, I'll leave this here. I'll go to uh, the next project. Uh